Can a wolf dog be trained? Can they be taught to behave? Can you get them to do what you want? These are the kinds of questions I see new and prospective wolf dog guardians asking frequently, many times in consternation that their young wolf dog is running amok with seemingly no interest in listening or behaving. My answer is, of course they can be trained. And if you're approaching their training in the same Certainly. tried and true ways you've trained all your dogs in the past, my advice yeah. is to take those expectations and oh. toss them right out the window. Good girl. Most doggy dogs have been bred selectively for generation upon generation to like you, to want your attention, and to engage in behaviors that make humans happy. Motivating a dog is highly consistent in most individuals. A high value treat, or a session of play with their favorite toy, or the granting of or withholding of enthusiastic plays is usually enough to shape their behavior. Once they learn what you want from them, they're usually eager to offer it out of the goodness of their doggy hearts, or at the very least, the chance for a yummy treat. Developmentally, I think of dogs a lot like small children. They're easily redirected from bad behavior with something fun, tasty, or interesting. And they're highly attuned to the desires of their caregivers. They seek attention and approval from us above almost anything. Wolf dogs, well, let's just say they're a little more complex. What motivates a wolf dog is going to be highly individual to the animal and usually inconsistent from day to day or moment to moment. For the sake of this video, I want you to frame them in your mind more similarly to a cat or a teenager. They're extremely intelligent, capable of engaging deeply with the things that matter to them, but independent, selective, aloof, and difficult to motivate. They're at a developmental stage that is more occupied with self-actualization than securing the attention of their caregivers. They're not easily distracted or redirected from the things they fixate on. To put it bluntly, they know what they want and they do what they want. To make matters even more complicated, wolf dogs of all content levels are prone to fearfulness and the avoidance of unfamiliar things. The reasons for this are quite obvious when you consider that dogs are man's best friend, while man is a wolf's only natural predator. Their survival of wolves throughout human history has hinged upon cautious avoidance of us and our settlements. Whereas the dogs that thrive and are selected to pass their genes onto future generations are the ones most confident, friendly, and biddable. Wolf dogs being part wolf and part dog, exists somewhere between these two extremes. Understand that no amount of coaxing, coercion, praise, or punishment is going to override an animal's fear. For that, you are going to need patience. So is there any actual advice here? Am I offering any solutions to the frustrated wolf dog guardians who just want their wolf dog to listen? Yeah, I do have some advice. Are we getting to the tips and tricks section of this video? No, actually, because there are no tricks. It's all about the long game. It's all about garnering loyalty. 
the more you listen to their needs and wants, the more interested they will be when you express your wants and needs. The more help you can offer them in overcoming their fears, the more confident they will become following you into unfamiliar situations. The fact that Echo, a formerly feral wolf dog who wasn't even touched for the first 18 months of her life, is now willing to walk calmly alongside me past strangers, traffic, unfamiliar dogs, and a whole host of distracting smells and sounds isn't a testament to my skill as a trainer. It's not even a reflection of Echo's and my love and affection for each other. It's a direct result of the loyalty and trust that has grown between us through years of listening to each other's wants and needs and committing ourselves to our partnership. My advice when attempting to train a wolf dog is to step away from the transactional approach of giving or withholding payment in exchange for a behavior. This may work consistently with most dogs, but it falls flat with most wolf dogs. My advice is to frame the whole of your relationship as the payoff for behavior that mutually benefits both you and your wolf dog. The food and nourishment you provide each day, the companionship you provide through play and snuggles, the adventures that you embark on together, the consistency and structure that you create for them to ease their fears, the security and confidence you help them develop, the opportunities to engage with their interests that you facilitate for them. All of it together is what creates the desire for them to look to you and follow your lead. To the extent that you rely on their interest in a treat or a toy or even your praise in the moment, your requests for behavior will hinge on their current level of interest. Your praise and play may be the most interesting and engaging payoff in the morning in your own home, only to become virtually irrelevant to a new and interesting smell on the trail later that same afternoon. The steak or salmon or cheese they wanted badly enough to sit and stay, come and heal for five minutes ago, may cease to hold any sway over them five minutes later when they're bored of the repetition. Your months of successful training may evaporate into thin air when something frightens them and triggers their age-old instinct to avoid unfamiliar and frightening situations. The transactional approach to training canines is like offering ice cream or a sticker in exchange for good behavior. Maybe that works for a toddler, but it's not going to be enough to motivate a high school student. In the same way, treats and praise may motivate a regular dog, but fall completely flat on a wolf dog. If you want them to look to you and follow your lead, you're going to have to tap into something deeper. Their sense of belonging, the belief that you're interested in their overall well being, and the trust that your rules and requests create harmony in the pack that benefits them as much as it benefits you. The biggest way that you do this is by investing your time, energy, and love in them every single day, meeting their physical, mental, and social needs through good nutrition, plenty of exercise, lots of engagement adventure and play with you and other canines. Embracing that their nature includes a high level of independent decision-making and a fully defined sense of self. And most importantly, by investing in them as individuals, building their confidence within themselves to enrich their lives. Once you've got that, and as long as you maintain that, Teaching them behaviors becomes the easiest of all of your jobs as a wolf dog guardian. Motivating them to partner with you and follow your lead consistently stops hinging so precariously and inconsistently on their ever-shifting hierarchy of wants 
and becomes rooted in something much deeper. Their need for belonging, their desire for a deep connection, their investment in the overall harmony and well-being of their pack. The trust that their needs and desires are a priority, not an afterthought. And the knowledge that their nature is accepted and celebrated. Someone once told me that you don't teach a wolf dog tricks. You teach them manners. And that's not because they can't learn tricks. They can. It's because our ability to live in harmony with each other doesn't depend upon our wolf dog's ability to sit or fetch or spin in a circle. It depends on the strength of our relationship. As long as your approach to training is transactional, as long as you're attempting to trade payment for a behavior, your efforts will fail as often as they succeed. When your focus shifts to building a harmonious relationship over the whole of your lives together, you'll find a partnership that transcends anything you could have imagined. Thanks so much for watching. We really hope to see you again on future videos. And if you enjoyed this one, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing with other animal lovers. Thanks.